the topic was um, kind of what is it? What is the, the hanging out the video linking of all these people? What is that? What value does that add to learning? I guess is where we were. And um, Sheena is just joining us right now. So Sheena, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, hi everyone. My name is Sheena. This is actually the first uh, online hangout that I've done um, for you know like uh, teachers, which I'm excited about. Um, I'm a high school teacher. I teach in Maryland. Can you still hear me? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm actually a special education teacher. Um, so I have intensive classes, and I also co-teach with general educators. I'm doing English and world history this year, 11th grade. Have you done Hangouts at all before? Um, I've tried I've tried it once um, where we watched um, President Obama's Hangout um, with my class, and I also was a Peace Corps volunteer, so I am interested in doing a Hangout with um, some of uh, my friends that I still communicate with in Niger, West Africa, to have my students be able to talk, you know, face-to-face -face with friends in Niger. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm kind of just... Um, well, so experiment. you're experimenting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. experimenting. I've so, heard about uh, field trips, too. Kevin, um, Kevin, I heard, I did hear before I got um, frozen out, I don't know what happened here, that um, your list of ways that we might use this and 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 it, those seemed like pretty formal kinds of suggestions you were making, um, and I would certainly agree that some of the wild stuff that we started with with the students wasn't very productive. However, I'm wondering. So, so I'm wondering if we could we could think about a spectrum of those those more formal kinds of debates and and presentations and so forth on one end. And conversations on another end, and if if there can be some meeting in between, is that does anybody else kind of think about that? Well, earlier on, I heard I heard a couple of different R's. I heard uh, releases, and I heard what they amounted to uh, were rehearsals, which I thought were good ideas. And the thing that I would contribute, being sort of a more of a technical person, I guess would be resources. I see, uh, I think, um, plenty of fertile ground for uh, using uh, maybe slightly higher quality cameras or um, making other students participate in the Hangout by uh, doing what they do in television studios, you know, making a little booth to broadcast from, doing a little bit of set dressing, you know, set dressing from theater. Mm -hmm. Making something appealing, which God forbid, please don't look behind me. But, but Kevin, I don't think I don't think that's what we're after here, though. No, we're you after want conversation. more informal world. We're after conversation, I uh, think. Yeah, but if you go into a job interview or you you meet with people in a professional setting, and and don't you don't you feel that your communication is enhanced by having a certain standard? I mean, don't you? Isn't the whole point of an education? to teach people to find a kind of comfortable common ground where they feel they look good and, and they feel that they have control of their persona in terms of the broadcast, for example? Right, and the common ground that I'm looking for is thinking about a spectrum and thinking about how can we have real deeper conversations that go beyond just, you know, hi, you're pretty or, <laughs> or whatever, you know, to... but but not necessarily going to rehearsed. So we want people thinking as they're talking, I think. Like I'm doing right now. <laughs> you know? Um, I think I think it depends though on what the final I mean, what's the final outcome in the end. So I'm looking at Jorge right now and Jorge and I have talked about how if he posted work like some of the manga, the original manga that hopefully he produces with other kids and he posted that online and had a conversation with people about that after he's posted, say, work. I think that's a that's like a that's a process conversation where I think like my background might not need to be so pretty, and we use a Google Hangout really and truly as like, can I get feedback, um, real feedback um, when you're doing it? But then I also see that the formal Kevin, what you're talking about, where you kind of set it up more, because I kind of work 
when we did a few of these hangouts, like after I saw what we looked like in the background, um, trying to situate my students so that we now then if you look at the hangouts, the last couple, they kind of look like a choir because um, – <laughs> Because I don't know what it looks like to other people that might be watching it. Mm -hmm. I also want my students to, to, to feel like they look good or, you know, that there's some, that they just look right on camera. I don't know what that means, though. You know, we're just trying it. So I, I just feel I, like, yeah, it depends. Yeah, I, I don't think that just like you stop over to your friend's house and have a cup of coffee and you have a chat and that's, that's one level of formality. You know, there are other ways. And not just resources in terms of, professional studio production necessarily, but also just making sure that the lighting is good, that the cameras are good, that the students understand the foreground and background. Again, I see when I look at the film strip at the bottom here, I see a varying approaches to making uh, what shows up on the screen be just the part of you that you want to show, I think. In this case, the, I think the more experienced people have taken a little bit of time to present their face and not have a busy background, which is clearly something I, I didn't give much thought to today. You know, and and just basic lighting so that you're the the big advantage of the Google Hangout that I think is clear is the meta communication, mm. the facial expressions, the kinesics, the the part uh, of your expression when you communicate that allows you to reach out to other people and really influence them with the earnestness of your presentation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like the background. It's in communication it's in itself. Who is that? Is that Annabelle talking? Yeah, sorry, that's Annabelle. Yeah. No, okay. And introduce yourself. I, I was off air when you were when you jumped in here. Oh, uh, well, I, I run a, uh, a non-profit called Big Fun Education, and I started out as a, um, I, I trained as a teacher in England, um, taught in France for a year, and then taught fifth grade in New York City. And out of that came a series of plays. Um, I, I used to do theater with the kids because our textbooks were so old and boring. I taught in a little um, private school that was not fancy at all. Um, in Washington Heights, and uh, we decided that we didn't like the textbooks, and uh, the kids were shocked that I agreed with them that they looked boring. So we put we took a vote and we put all the textbooks away in the closet, and uh, then I had to teach um, ancient Greek, you know, civilization. So I taught through a play, and then I said to the kids, "Remember those books? Uh, we might want to use those for reference books." So sort of redefining the textbook way back then and 30 years ago, uh, finding a reason to, to want to know that information as opposed to just, you know, here's chapter one. And so, well, could, I, yeah. and could I just uh, ask you to talk, ha, have you talked at all yet about the project that you're working yes. on now? Yes. You have already. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah. So that's, okay. you know, just out of that came my theater project and 30 years on I'm still working on it. Still trying to get it right, trying to bring it into the digital age, and uh, so now I'm doing this thing. Macbeth goes social, and uh, we've got a series of hangouts, all sorts of different kinds of hangouts, um, bringing in theatre specialists, trying to make the hangout itself a dramatic event, um, which I don't want to disclose too much because I really want it to be a surprise, and to get the kids to live blog it and blog it and tweet about it, and also have the kids wrangle the questions that come in. Uh, from different sources. So really I want to authentically rely on the kids to um, to help to help produce a good show. Can I, can I, can we hear from the students about this question? Like, do you want to rehearse? Do you want to just talk? Or what's valuable to you? Paul, I'm going to pop out for a second here and put Cassidy back in. Okay. Thank you. I can. Yeah. Jorge, do you have any thoughts on that? You're muted, uh, Jorge. Oh. There you go. Yes. Um, so, what was the question again? How formal do you want these? Or could these become? Would it be? Would it? Would you like that? Would it help you think? Um, 
or do you want them to be informal? I think um, informal will be better because then people because um, when, when you normally talk to someone, you don't you're not really that much formal. You just you know you just start spinning out words and see where it's getting it, to see where where the conversation is going and get to actually know the person. Because if you speak in a formal kind of tone, that also the other person kind of off a little bit, I guess. Like for like student wise, because students like they don't, sometimes they get really like um, bored from school and speaking formal and like in papers and stuff. So if they able to talk uh, informally, then they would have a better time communicating with others. Cassidy, did you hear any of, of what we're trying to get to here? No, sorry, I was oh, trying sorry. to. Somebody want to summarize in. for me? <laughs> better than I did. I, so, so here's here's so here's one thing that, that we should clarify. The the way teacher seeking teachers works is just um is just like this. Uh, we meet every week, and and some and it's not terribly formal. So so that's one thing to think about in terms of how much preparation to do. Um, Joe, I like how you said that even in just a couple of broadcasts, you started thinking about some of the technical things and, and so forth um, and how we represent ourselves and how kids represent themselves. All that's good, um, but because they're not one-offs, right, it's not like a performance, it does seem to me that that um, the goal of our connections have to do with, on for the Youth Voices stuff, has to do with having new ideas at the moment of utterance, right? So um, that feels like an important thing to, you know, preserve room for. But, but Cassidy, the question, so one way to approach this question might be if, um, do you think we could rehearse or prepare better for, for the hangouts we have with students? Um, well, one thing Mr. Stone has talked about is just like, Talking about our ideas is a better way to like understand what we're trying to learn. And when we, I think like maybe having like an idea, like if we're going into a Google Hangout talking about like our just our research paper or like that, then maybe that will help. But I just like talking about like anything and talking with other students, like talking with Tommy about the video game. I thought that was really cool and interesting and really fun and getting to know someone. So I thought this was really good. I really liked it and I would do it again. And I think it would be more fun to have more students if that would be possible um, to talk about research too because I cause like I'd still like have a lot to do on my research paper and I would be willing to talk about that if that was possible. But I liked it. I really liked yeah. it. Cool. I think Cassidy, could I jump on um, Crocodile for a second? Mm -hmm. Chris, is that okay? So, so I did. I did put up a video, and and right on your member page, there's a link to a video. It's a little six-minute video that talks about how to use Crocodile, how to um, how to put up an article in Crocodile. So there, and this is going kind of totally in a different direction. But if, Cassidy, if you logged into Youth Voices right now and you went down to your member home and you found the Youth Voices Crocodile folder, you would find now inside that folder there's a folder called Exercise and Physical Activity. I think it's something like to that, to that okay. effect. And a couple of the articles that you have found already and then a couple others that I found I put up there as PDFs, and then you can actually annotate them there online. Oh, um, that's awesome. And the cool thing about it is it gives you a unique URL, and then other people could have conversations with you there too, right? So okay. um, you'll notice that, that, that I'm doing that. I'm sort of looking on Youth Voices, finding people's sources, and finding the PDF versions or making the PDF versions using printfriendly.com, and then putting those up into folders, and then people can find them and, and read them. I mean, there is an assumption there, which I should say, I'm saying this really fast, but which is that we want you to read deeply, 
<laughs> we don't like sometimes when we do research, we're just like grabbing and and looking over things really fast. Mm -hmm. But one of my values, and I think we can use this technology to kind of promote, is is collaborative reading, reading with other people, and um, like reading uh, with a lot of response, right? So you're being thoughtful and and as you read through stuff. So there are a couple studies that that I think I found and put up there. Perfect. Well, thank you. I'll definitely look at that tomorrow for. So, Chris and great, Chris and Joe. Any did is that helpful or is it too much or what do you think about it? <laughs> or do you understand even what I'm talking about yet? So, Paul, you're basically <laughs> yeah. saying that that we now we have a converse we have conversations happening on Hangouts and. A potential next step is our kids that might have common research topics jumping on a on a doc together and continuing the conversation there in written form, and then bringing it back to the hangout again, and 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 basically just keeping up the di the the cycle of dialogue, both written and oral. Yeah, but right, but I noticed that I think Chris, your students. Um, Looked at some of Joe's students' work and suggested resources for them. Right. Right. Is that is that what happened? Yeah. So um, one of the things I tell them in when making comments is that we can say a lot of things. We can um, um, connect to our personal experience to kind of help people, uh, you know, flesh out topics. But another thing is we can put links to other resources. So when my students come across Tommy or Jorge's posts, if they um, do a little reading around that themselves and search in their own way, uh, if they come across resources that they think Tommy or Jorge might benefit from, you know, the idea is to drop those links into comments on their Youth Voices posts. Right. And, and Tommy, there's, if, if you go to the Crocodile folder again, Youth Voices Crocodile folder, if you can't find it, let me know. But it's, uh, you click under welcome your name and then it'll say member home and then on that list there's a link to the crocodile folder there is a there is a video games and kids folder that yes. over the over the last year or two we've been collecting articles there so that might be a way to find stuff and and kind of respond to each other again what's what's nice about it then when you post something you can say i read this if you want to go read it and see what i thought when i read it you can go to this link and, and, and see it, right? So it's a way to share resources, it seems to me. That's what I'm suggesting. <laughs> Just one more thing to throw in the mix. It's <laughs> well, Cassidy can kind of yeah. um, tell me whether this makes sense. But, you know, um, we've been searching, you know, doing um, search operators on Google, for instance, but also looking at... Um, stuff that is password protected that's available through our library. And um, so, you know, that's Chris, like... Chris, can I, can I jump on that one? Sorry. sorry. I, I know you have a lot you to know, say about that. Well I, well, I just have one thing to say. Four out of five times if they're not password protected, I can find the articles anywhere. Right. So... so yeah, that's, that's another conversation. So like, yeah, okay, I know. But my point is, <laughs> yeah. all right, quickly, my point is... <laughs> If they're they're in this uh, information age, this is a knowledge economy. They should at least know how to function through databases. I'm not saying this stuff is only in databases, but that they may have a job where they'll have to navigate databases. Sure. But anyway, so what I'm thinking with Crocodoc is um, that could be another kind of database of sorts that students are generating, and that could be like the next thing that I could have students do or an activity down the road would be, you know, build um, some folders or files in these Crocodoc folders so that other Youth Voices students could uh, use them. And sometimes, Cassidy, I think there's a lot of stuff that I throw at you guys, and I, I go kind of slow with those, so you I can like give me it. some feedback. I actually like it, because I keep pretty much on track with all of it. Like. I think I got behind because I did the chat, and that's when I got behind on all these voices and stuff. But I like it because now I have all my stuff organized in there in my Google Doc, and I can just click to it, and I have my EBSCO right there and click to it. I have my site operator. So I like it, and all my 
research is right there. So I like the stuff that you throw at us. I don't know about everyone else, but right? Because I mean, I would there's there's another layer, Paul. We've been working with Sod mm -hmm. from Sightlighter, uh, you know, and using that tool too. So yeah. I, you know, sometimes I'm a little that. hesitant to. Toss. I love Sightlighter. <laughs> yeah. That, and, and that helps you cite the sources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool. No, all, all that's important, and and you know, I you you're right. Your your point is correct. I also just think it's so interesting to, to be able to find the stuff out on the you know Wild West to uh, <laughs> the Wild Web. Um, but um, yeah, so check that video out if that if that's helpful. Um, do you guys have? Can we end this tonight by saying do you have a plan for tomorrow? <laughs> Are you talking about our hangout for tomorrow? Yeah, and and by oh, the way, yeah. I did think I did think of a a somewhere in between place, which is that kids could come ready for to present, you know, their research or where they are in their research in a more formal way, and then let conversation break out of that. So, and that seems to be where we're going anyhow. So, was there any thought yet? Well, I'll just jump in, Joe, really quick. Yeah. Um, it's funny you should mention that, but tomorrow uh, my students are going to be like in groups of three, just kind of talking through what they found so far, because they've been finding a lot of stuff. So I was envisioning maybe uh, Cassidy, you could kind of be the point person again, just bringing two people who haven't really talked, and have them talk a little bit at length about what they've been finding. And, and Joe, I don't know if that works for you, but that's kind of where we are, where people need to talk about their topics with each other for an extended period. Uh, yeah, we're good for that. I had, um, Donique was going to come on if we were going to do um, anything related to fashion and media influence on fashion, but I can bring on anybody at this point. So do um, you want us to be? I'll look through my class. Okay. And Cassidy, you kind of think of some people who might work for that general topic, and we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at the the whole fashion, and I guess not social media, but I guess media influence on things like, yeah. Okay, sounds good. That would be awesome. Thanks, Cassidy. You're welcome. Joe, I I liked how the topics were somewhat related, but. Yeah, we realized right. they, they became more related as we talked <laughs> in, in, in Youth Voices 5. At least. Yeah. yeah, I kind of yeah. just did a grab bag of everyone doing sports and health come into the room, and that's what happened. So mm -hmm. now I'm doing everyone doing fashion and media come into the room. But we right. can open it up, Chris, so, if you want. So we have a plan. I'll get on about noon Pacific time. Yep. And then whenever classes start, we'll start then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Because because I do think I do think doing this on a regular basis is, is like the, the one key. Because then other people will say, oh, that's when I can hook up with those folks. So, um, and we want to invite that to happen. Um. Uh, any any final thoughts here? We went over and we uh, got knocked off or something. And I hope you had a good conversation when I, when I wasn't here <laughs> uh, as well. But uh, why don't we quickly go around and just hear if anybody has any final thoughts. Cassidy, do you have any final thoughts? Um, I thought this was really good, and I hope we can continue doing this and get more students to come on board. So hopefully we can keep it up. So thanks for inviting me, too. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Cassidy. Annabelle, you have any thoughts? Well, thanks for inviting me. I'm just trying to explore ways of using Hangouts and um, keeping my ears open. And I think listening to the students and, and their point of view is really important. So I think this is a wonderful thing that you're doing. Jorge, any thoughts as we leave? Um, well, not really. Everyone said what I basically what I just had in mind. Cool. Kevin. I just would say that the big thing that comes to me is how powerful it is to break down isolation, uh, bring people together who are hugely far apart, who might seldom if ever see each other. Uh, and that's uh, unfortunately, I think the fellow who was working on the Navajo reservation dropped out there. Mm -hmm. I was going to say there's a lot of ways to uh, extend the network 
these days where you can bring people who are far apart in the country like that together. But also the social part of it, is, it can't be uh, overstated, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Tommy, any thoughts? Uh, I really like this. I like how we talk to, uh, with uh, different people from different parts of the country. It's really cool. Great. And Sheena, how was your first time? Uh, it was great. I um, I have a lot of research to do. I was taking a look at the website as um, we were hanging out, and um, I'm really interested. Um, I'd like to see how we can participate at my school in Maryland. Um, of course, my population of students are um, special ed students, but maybe we could do, you know, some collaboration with mentoring and helping, um, you know, with citations and research and things like that. Um, I'm not sure, but yeah, this is very exciting, and I'm looking forward to it. So we're here every Wednesday. Um, usually we're done before here. Now, thank you for staying in there, folks. Appreciate it. Um, we uh, we started six six p.m. Um, on the West Coast, nine p.m. here on the East Coast, and um, we have been doing this for several years now. And we started with uh, Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo um, at edtechtalk.com, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network. Anna, hi. Do you want to say anything, check in, or <laughs> sorry? Oh, no, no problem. Um, no, I was just thinking about, um, so the youth I work with right now are working at, they, they have a lot of the similar social issue topics that they're working on, mm -hmm. but they're taking, um, uh, a philosophical or, or ethical look at, at those topics rather than a, um, I guess you could say, uh, research in the traditional sense of looking mm -hmm. at what's pre previously been said about those. So I am I am interested in if we can ever work out a time <laughs> that would actually work. We had a snow day the last time we tried to do a hangout mm -hmm. together. Um, but I am interested in figuring out so that's, that, those are hard conversations to have, to dive in, like, to talk about the underlying, I guess, theories and philosophies about social aspect versus the data that we have about social issues. Mm -hmm. So so I am thinking about maybe having um, some kind of guiding questions um, that would help. So we might take a topic, you know, we could talk about the research around a particular social issue, but it would be great if we could talk then go th maybe through some guiding questions that we could think together about what are, what's kind of a, some of the underlying assumptions that are under, underneath that social issue um, and talk about the root of it as well. That would be really helpful for the youth I'm working with right now. Cool. And do, are they at NYU when you see them after no, school? No, well, it's a combination. Um, so we haven't been able to have the same tech that... Um, that we have had in the past. So I'm actually at um, some of their schools when when they get online and then they can also access things on their own but they just haven't done it you know people are nervous to try it on their own for the first time without but you do see them at 3 p.m. right um in that on that particular day so there's only particular days that I'm even working okay. on and there's so only we'll, particular days that anyway. but next Thursday is another day I will be there at 3 p.m. eastern time so if there's if we can set something up for that that would be great so why don't we say that next so, so this okay. Thursday is going to be media and fashion Next Thursday, it's going to be uh, philosophy and social issues with your students taking the lead. Um, yeah, that'd be great. We I haven't seen okay. them in in like three months. I know. So I, I probably will need a little bit of time to to even get back on the topic. But but if we could pick some of these social issues, I mean, even issues around fashion would be of interest. And mm -hmm. then there's some underlying about how do we present ourselves and our identities and how that's tied up in like our clothes. Like there's some. I think anything that any one of these topics has some underlying uh, things to talk about. Cool. Okay, we're gonna say thank you to everybody here tonight, um, and we'll see you soon. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.